everybody has been waiting for far too long. Welcome everyone, this is the Perfect World Masters Qualifier for the European region. This is the lower bracket round two. Uh, my name is Skim and we're gonna watch Penta Sports face off against Team Tuho. Um, we've just, if you have been watching for the past couple of hours, you might have been watching Penta lose to Mouse Sports. But if you've been on the BTS main channel, you might have watched Tuho win against Rocket Scientists. So, two completely different stories here. Penta coming fresh off of a loss, whereas Tuho fresh off of a win. Uh, though both teams quite a little bit tired, of course. You know, just playing, playing a couple of games or playing multiple series in a day can be very exhausting. But that's also why we had a little bit of a break, of course, because we didn't want to force Truho to play right away. Um, the draft already very different, different from the series that we had just now. So basically, we see the Necrophos, the Venomancer, immediately banned out Penta, no longer forced to ban out the uh, Wisp, which they didn't want to give Mouse Boys, of course. And then we have uh, Truho with a completely different approach as well. I mean, AA Slada, not necessarily... I mean, AA, of course, a hero that we've definitely Radiant seen a lot of lately, but Slada, not so much. Sort of fallen out of favor. Um, a lot of times, teams prioritize heroes like Earthshaker, Earth Spirit, uh, the Nyx Assassin, Spirit Breaker, Night Stalker. Uh, Night Stalker, of course, has been taken out, but Spirit Breaker is still in the game, though both teams opt remaining. not to pick it. Team Let me quickly see. I need to check a setting. Oh, first off is this setting. I'm gonna keep doing this. And now I have to do this. Alright, we're back in business. Because I need to check something else. That setting is okay. Alright. Also, I should note that uh, Penta is no longer playing with Pablo. I'm not sure who this is though. I tried checking out this person. This is a Finnish player, that's for sure. Um, but let me do some googling magic, some some stalking. Cannot find this person. Cannot find this person. Um, now I'm not sure who it is. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds. Remaining. It's not Armand, that's for sure. It's also not Skeeter, so. I am not sure who this is. So, I don't know. They have another stand, and that's bad as it is. Because if you're, you know, if you're playing in a qualifier for a tournament, you, of course, do not want to play with too many stand-ins. But Penta already have had a couple of roster changes since TI, of course. So, maybe this is another one long-term. I don't know. I should, probably should have asked them, actually. Oh, well. Looking at the bands... Uh, some interesting bands coming out. Pa Pagna and Puck, of course, being taken out. Um, don't really want to give Penta too much combo potential. You know, Pagna and Profit, just very potent. And at the same time, Penta just making sure with that Brute Mother pick. Do not want to get Brute Mothered. They unlikely will have a hero that can deal with the Brute Mother. As for Tuho, they look towards the Magnus. It's a strong pick. I've seen both Mickey and Korka play it. So, you know, even Demon, I think, played it as a support once. Was that Demon? I know GH did it, but I'm pretty sure Demon did it as well at some point. Um, but it's most likely a support Slada offlane Magnus. Anything else would be ludicrous. Or, not ludicrous, but anything else would be a little bit wild. Um, let's see what kind of carries that uh, carries to her wolf combo this with. Traditional ones, you know, Juggernaut, for example. Uh, just enable them to farm even more than they already do. Doesn't even have to, I mean, could, yeah, could even go back to heroes that already go into cleave anyway, you know, maybe even like the Sven, the Anti Mage, just increases their damage output, increases their farm more, um, speeds up their farm. But there's already a lot of ganking potential here on Tua's side with Slada, Magnus AA. They have a lot of ways of catching people. 
a lot of ways of dealing with people. They have minus armor, they have the ice blast. That's a lot of ways to deal with this pesky Nature's Prophet who is gonna look to split push across the map. Dire team pick. Penta commit to the push. Pick up a Jakiro. Five position Jakiro most likely. Uh, in NA, we have seen a couple of offlane Jakiros. Zai has played it, Mu has played it in the offlane. It's not out of the ordinary. We've seen, we've seen it in Europe as well, but remaining. most likely a five position Jakiro. Quite five strong, actually. Remaining. Ice Path is really good as a counter to any of those initiations, you know, because most likely Slada Magnus will blink into very close or very. Pretty much the same position, you know, you blink RP, scare them back, and then you blink onto the crush on top of them. And if you lay an ice path on top of them, you prevent or interrupt potential follow ups. Radiant team pick. Phantom Assassin. Phantom Assassin is the pick. Wow. That is a strong Magnus combo. And that's a lot of mid-game aggression. You get you get an early blink with the slaughter, you smoke up with the PA, and you look for kills. Ten seconds remaining. The question is, how are Penta going to respond to this? Uh, thus far, from what I've seen, they tend to pick their mid-hero first before they pick the carry. Let me check. Yeah, I've seen a lot of carry last picks. I mean, it differs obviously from game to game, but we'll see. Oh, they're gonna go with the Ursa first, which can still be a mid hero. But interesting that they go with the Ursa. I guess it makes sense because if you do get initiated upon, right, if you do have the Agonist, for example, you can just ult out of, say, the RP or the Crush. And you are quite tanky, but. I also think there's a lot of kite potential against the Ursa. That's why I'm a bit surprised, but. We'll see. Of course, he also has a lot of push. He can take objectives quite quickly. Roshan, Towers. Um, he farms quite efficiently as well. But still an interesting pick, nonetheless. Especially against the PA. You know, the dagger is really strong against Ursa. It's difficult to burst on the PA because of the mischance. So we'll see how that one plays out. Bans coming out now. Both teams will likely look to ban mid heroes. Sure, Ursa could be a mid mid-hero as well, but I still think it would probably be safe to ban a mid-hero here. Radiant team did they just... Did they just Radiant forget to ban? I believe they did. I believe they ran out of reserve time, yeah. Alright, Queen of Pain is the pick for Penta. And with a Viper ban, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for Tuho to find a mid-hero that it can dominate this matchup. Um, let's see, what can they pick here? If they want something to complement their aggression... I, th I honestly think they shouldn't go all in with the aggression. If they wanted to, they could go, say, TA. But if they didn't want to, they could go for something like the Shadow Fiend, maybe, as a carry. But they're going to go with the Templar Assassin. So all-out aggression. Though, TA still obviously has a lot of carry potential. Um... All right, this is pretty much, well, I believe lanes will be as expected, just from looking at it, yeah, looks, I mean, we'll still see, obviously, once they load into the game, but pretty much the roles are as expected, it's a carry Ursa, carry of PA, offlane Magnus, and support Jakiro, of course. I wonder if my chat's not loading or people are just not chatting. Are you are you still live people in Twitch chat? Ten seconds remaining. Hmm. We'll see. Five seconds remaining. I think going into this game I would probably favor Tuho. Mm, uh, I like their lineup better. But I do think that Penta, I mean, I've seen them play just now and I definitely can execute a certain style together with a Prophet. And I believe this is going to come, I mean, as always, it's going to come down to, you know, the rotations and the timings, really. Um, who's going to get the Blink first? If Salah can find a Blink before the Ursa, which he shouldn't, obviously, but if he can, 
that could totally swing the game into Trua's favor. But in general, I mean, I guess you could say that about any support. Oh, if he gets that before the carry, well... No, but in general, I do think, you know, the, the blink on the slot is going to decide or dedicate or dictate the tempo of the game or the pace of the game. And that's where it's going to be. So look towards Insania to make things happen. But for now, we have the Ward Dance. Insania isn't even smoked up. Wow. Um, Jakira is putting up a very aggressive ward. This is a much more common ward as well now. Provides a little bit of vision here. And blocks the camp, of course. And it's behind the tree. So it's not necessarily easy to scout out as well. Insania gets scouted out. Has the crush, but doesn't need to use it. Looks like they're gonna put Kwai Kwai in the off lane, in the safe lane and have PA Slada AA in the in the off lane. And looks like yeah, Penta want to avoid that lane. That by itself is why this ward paid dividends already to give them this information and to have a favorable leaning start for them because they do not want to face this tri lane. Uh, it's not that Boogie is gonna have a good time either, but you know it's not like Ursa would have a good time either. So. This is good for them. Smoke up from Turo. It was scouted, of course. The battle begins. And I don't think they should find a kill. No, they don't. So three runes for Turo. Already a net worth lead in that regard. Pink's coming out from Mickey. I wonder if he's flaming his own block or if it just accidentally pinged. Actually, no. Uh, we'll see about that. It's not a great block, but it's not a bad block either. It depends on... Oh, the next assassin. It's just an annoying block. Dodge is the Shadow Strike. Well, that's the cutesy play that's the place that you can do if you're a TA versus uh, Queen of Pain, of course. Top lane, we have Jakiro, Ursa versus the Magnus, and of course, bottom lane, Prophet versus AA. PA and Slada. Though the Slada is already rotating mid. Needs to give this TA a little bit of help. And Mickey gets a lot of harassment with the Shadow Strike up as well. They're gonna look for a kill here, but I believe TA should be the first one to die. And in fact, she is. First blood is spilled, and DNZ, or I believe they call him Dino, doesn't fall anyway. So the lane's pretty much as Penta wants them to. I think Tuho is sort of fine with this as well. They can still farm on the PA, they can outfarm the Prophet a little bit. Well, actually, it's difficult to outfarm the Prophet. So, eh, we'll see. Mickey probably realized at this stage that there is a sentry there. I mean, he's seen it on, on the Nyx Assassin earlier anyway. But yeah, it's not already with the rotations. And Senya calling, guys, let's kill this, let's kill this Prophet. We need to. We need to make something happen, right? Mm, did they not see him? I guess they didn't see him. Well, they had. They must have seen him. But maybe they just don't want him. Secure runes first. I can suppose TA harassed quite a bit. Again, there is a sentry right here, and Mickey might just die again, even with the fairy fire. Might keep himself alive. No. Maybe he could have gotten that kill, but well, it's very difficult against an assassin with a stout shield, no less. So. Already a very difficult to bring down hero and TA. She's still farming okay, but of course giving up two kills is never great. Also has a bit of cooldown on the, on the TP. Fortunately for her though, it's a big creep wave coming. So lots, lot of, lots of experience at least. Not sure she's going to be able to farm everything underneath the tower though. Skira from the Ursa back to tower range, but Koika, that's harassment, that's nice. But it has to be careful, Salve's pop. Chakra's going to cancel it, but Oliver in turn gets that kill. So overall that's actually not bad for Koika. Because they ran through that self. Both Oliver and the Jakira are now low on regeneration. And yeah, mid lane TA. Did get a lot of last hits in this lane, so not bad for her. Mind Force Stunt, the Melt, and now they got rid of her fraction. 
Can they kill Nikki first? Dino's getting really low with the Melt Strike on top of it for sure. And Senior has a crush on three seconds, looks to be chasing it. In the meantime, Gala gets a kill onto Boogie, but we're gonna follow this one. And Senia is probably gonna fall here, does do so indeed. But bottom lane, they get the much needed kill here. Level 4 and level 4. Yeah, so level wise, it's not bad for the TA, but of course. Queen of Pain does have more gold because she has had a fantastic time in Slain. And again, if you've been watching the first uh, the first series today between Penta and Mouse Wards, you'll see that Nine had an excellent performance on this Queen of Pain, and this is not a player or a hero to take lightly. Oh, Mickey, you could have been blessed with a region rune. Instead, that's probably going to go to Insania, isn't it? Yep. Bottom lane, they find Garter. Do they have a Sprout? No, they don't. It's just harassment for now. I won't, won't be get, getting that kill. Nine. Sees the starter. Blinks out. Smart play. With that Hygon Ward. Otherwise, they'd probably get the crush if that Hygon Ward isn't there. The smart play from Insania. Playing in the shadows, knowing that there's basically. There shouldn't be vision. If that, if that ward isn't there, there's no vision here. And then he can get that crush from uphill. But of course, that word. I mean, it's, it's just there. Pia, PA now getting his zone out of the lane with the Jakira rotating bottom. Ursa knows that he can stand a lane solo now versus the versus the Magnus. What's that? Oh, that's just Nyx assassin blocking the camp, preventing that stack. He does scout out the TA as well. Might just leech some experience. Doubt he can actually kill her. Probably harass, if anything. Maybe steal a couple of assets. Uh, nah, he's just gonna leech experience. What? Oh, yeah, he is. Bottom lane, got her. Oh, there's obviously no ice path. That's not how people skill this hero. Nyx Assassin's doing a really good job staying out of this TA's division. And in the meantime, Insania gets a lot of experience here. So thus far, I think I think both sides are sort of content with how the lanes are going. Uh, I mean, obviously, Tuho doesn't want to lose the lane. Oh, bottom lane, they're going to go into Boogie again with a slow from the Orb of Venom and the Cold Feet on top of it. This might be a kill here. There's another sh dagger, and the Sprout is going... Oh, the Orb of Venom. Butter? Nah, he surely can't go for this kill, right? He surely can't go for this kill. With the Cold Feet? No. I mean, obviously it's not going to proc, that's just never going to do it because, you know, the timing, but the damage potentially could have gotten him a kill. But yeah, the point I was trying to make, obviously you don't want to lose a lane, but I think, you know, if you have accepted the fact that you have lost the lane, you can just trade here, but Mickey, getting harassed, he's going to... doesn't melt, actually. Doesn't have... no, no, he does have melt. Oh, P uh, Quap licking in aggressively, misses the Sonic Wave onto the Slatos, I'm not sure they can go for more here, but Goddard comes in with the aggressive jump and they do get the kill of the Green Pain and Prophet as well, and in fact might even get this Nyx Assassin, they should be able to, he doesn't have any mana anymore, so that's just body blocking, wanted to give the kill to Garter, but it is Demon that snatches it, so a double kill, I believe, for Demon? No, that kill was split, so it's a kill for Garter, kill for Demon, and a split kill, overall a very favorable trade here. The only unfortunate thing is that TA died before everything went down, so she didn't get a single piece of experience for that. But yeah, a very aggressive blink forward from the Queen of Pain, trying to get the kill. Didn't see... I mean, I guess they should have seen the rotation, actually. I wonder if they went through the shrine or not. Either way, though, very difficult for them to deal with that. But, of course, Penta... Immediately going back to the push, but again, Tuho, great trade for them. Great start for this Garter PA. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower. Oliver gets a tower. In the lane, a little bit of harassment going back and forth. Alright, so what's the game plan here for both sides? 
I assume for both sides, really, it's just waiting for a couple of items and then try and force for force a couple of kills. We see the blink queued up on the Ursa. I believe that's going to be a very important one. Um, though, actually, if, yeah, I guess Tuho kind of want to take a little bit slower because their items are going to come online a little bit slower. They could smoke up with PA Slaughter even without a blink, but it's going to be difficult to find kills. Ursa certainly isn't going to be easy to kill. Queen of Pain isn't going to be easy to kill. Yeah, profit in the supports for sure. But I think for now, trying to get better trades is what, or trying to get trades is what Tour is going to look forward to. As you can see, Penta pushing two towers, Tuho immediately going to look towards his bottom one. And for them, that's a sufficient trade for now because it does give them a little bit of room. And of course, also the gold. Jakiro smartly TPs out. Ritling Koifa trying to divert this creep, creep wave. Not successful though. So, yeah. This is just a lot of damage, uh, tower damage traded, but again, for Tuho, this is access to the tier, uh, to the jungle here, and they can still defend this tower, yeah, Oliver getting slowed down, Garter doesn't really want to get too close to Nursa, he is by himself after all. Look at the net worth graph, yeah, it's actually going in favor in, I mean, it's going back down again. So this is just Tuho making better use of the entire map. I mean, both supports, look. You have Demon farming the wave. You have Insania picking up the runes and just overall just, you know, roaming around between lanes. You have everybody else just farming, whereas on Penta's side, they're sort of grouped up and oh, Oliver, with, if the A blast connects, that's maybe a kill. They force out the ultimate. They couldn't turn it around, potentially. Nyx Assassin's here, gonna slow them down a little bit. Oliver's still being scattered out, and that should be a kill indeed with a crit. Mid lane, though. Nine wants to go for the Korea. Knew he was gonna get the kill in Slada anyway, so didn't want to commit. And, oh, DNZ finds a nice stun, and it does enable the kill here for Nine. Triple kill for him. Comes in with a huge Sonic Wave. Uh, so Sonic Wave, yeah. And that is uh, potentially a tier one as well. And nice thing for him, it was an Arcane Rune Sonic Wave as well, so that Sonic Wave is going to be up pretty soon again. A little bit of a mis misplay from Tuho, I'd argue. They saw the Queen of Pain here, of course, so they should have known that there was the potential for her to just turn on them. But they did want that Esk or that Assassin for the Metal. Oh, jump in. Nine. Blinks out, though. There's of course no blink RP or anything just yet. And 9, 6k net worth. 2k ahead, almost double the net worth of the TA. That is absolutely insane. And Penta already, already smoke up again, trying to look for a kill here. Nyx Assassin, of course, does have his ultimate. If he finds a stun here, oh, finds a stun onto two, in fact. There's a Veil of Discord on top of it as well. Huh? Forpa looks to. No, he's not gonna get out of this for sure. So, Velo Discord done. And with the Wrath of Nature, a very well coordinated gank. Tuho, though, they've been farming silently on their course, PA, TA. But it is Insania and Quarkva that need those blink daggers for Tuho to be able to get into those fights. Boogie, gonna go for the standard drums build. Still not gonna go Orb of Venom, interesting. I guess if he's not gonna be a lane dominator, like you usually see from those prophets that do go Orb of Venom, don't really need it. That's a huge ancient stack, that's so good for Mickey. He's gonna get a little bit of help as well from his team. But looks like... Yeah, they're pinging it out. Penta do not want to give them this huge ancient stack, and it's going to take them some time to take it. They see... Yeah, they, they saw the Nyx Assassin. They know that he's here, and... Oh, they couldn't get the Invis. I think Nyx Assassin should know that they know. Oh, there's a double stun. Where's the follow-up? The Veil of Discord is there. There's a Scream, but it's an ultimate just hit. Yeah, there is. Sonic Wave connects. Quarkba is immediately going to melt, and Prophet in the backline is going to fall down immediately as well. Prophet or A is gonna go down. Oh, Mickey is still in fighting shape though. And there's the RP, solo RP onto the Ursa. I'm not sure this is the one that we're looking for. Ice Path connects with the TA, triple crush, and in fact, there's double kill for Gata. 
I think Penta overextended here and they need to go back. Am I gonna retreat now? And it's gonna be Two Ho looking for the stragglers. Nyx Assassin gonna get the Carapace stun out and he might have to turn. No, doesn't have to have him. Doesn't have mana for a stun anymore. Nine is gonna go for the TPA and does get the kill, in fact. Prophet considering TPing in, but Nine doesn't have a lot of mana. He does have 17 sick charges. Could potentially lure them in. But no, he's just gonna blink out and TP out. So overall, a good trade for Turo. They get the Ursa kill. Sure, they're forced to buy back on the Magnus, but that is very, very worth it. You can get what? Three kills? Two of them were cores, so that's great for you. And they protect their stack. Though, as I say that, TA, Ursa's coming in with the Nyx Assassin under the guise of his ultimate. They're still the sentry, though, keeping. Vision and track over the Nyx Assassin. Then there's a stun connecting. Ursa jumps in and they get the kill into the TA. Oh. Slada is still here as well. Shadow Strike does connect. And with the Velo Discord, that's a dead insane. Yeah, PA comes in as well though. Snatches the Nyx Assassin. Well, did the TA spend her gold though? She did not. So that's quite a little bit of gold loss. 200 gold loss, yeah. And this opens up, of course, towers. Whenever Penta will take heroes, they will also take down towers. Tuho cannot really trade just yet because the lanes are getting constantly pushed in. Top lane looks like they find the Jakiro, but just awkward because they don't really have any good way of initiating, right? There's no way of catching them. If PA was here with a dagger, sure. Oliver. Oh, looks like they're gonna look for a kill. They see the TA and the slaughter. Looks like they're gonna fall for the TA first. Oliver miss blinks. He blinks too far. Downhill, in fact. And Mickey very low with the Nyx Assassin coming in with the Impale. Does get the kill. In the meantime, they also get the get the slaughter. Looks like they're gonna focus the PA now, and that's a dead PA as well. Should be dead anyway. Yeah, with the sprout. And with the shadow strike, the scream secures the kill. And again, they take it. They can take a fight right next to the tier 2 as well. This opens up so much for Penta and Team 2 right now without... Looks like they're gonna go for stack first. Not much of a stack, I suppose. Do they have a medallion for this Roshan? Hey, last game, they lost their game pretty much because they took a fight at Roshan without medallion. Well, unable to get that Roshan kill on time. Demon eyed up by 9. Prophet looks like he's gonna TP in as well. Potentially? Mm. He hinted at it. Demon's just juking him. Demon just juked him. There's a Yolts, but no. Nope. Successfully juked away. I'm surprised that Boogie didn't TP in. That's a secure kill. If he does. Or most likely, anyway. Good awareness, though, from coming out from Penta. Scouting out the ward. Truho. Bit of a rough position they're in right now. If we look at the graphs, they're almost 6,000, 5,000 behind in experience, almost 10k in net worth as well. And that is very rough indeed, and I wouldn't be surprised if they look to smoke up anytime soon. They do have a smoke on the AA. With a blink and DD on TA, for sure they should look to try for a kill. Ursa is quite far out, but... As I say that, the backup is, a backup is coming already. Nyx Assassin Jakiro right behind him. And of course, this is uh, very obvious at this, sta at this stage now. The wraparound. Tuho. Very patient. Queen of Pain in a good position to pop the smoke. And indeed, the smoke has been popped. They know that she's there. The ward? Does it scout her out? I don't think it does. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't. They don't see each other. The Ice Path is going to come on through, and now they find the Magnus. Magnus skews in RP onto two. A huge Ice Path on top of it as well. They find the Queen of Pain immediately. Ursa is going to go into the PA. PA, should she die? She does. Uh, TA is trapped inside the tree line now. And we see uh, with the Ice Path as well, and with the Ursa on top of her. She's dead for sure. Four fall. The fifth might follow soon. And Cena doesn't get the crush onto the Jakiro. Doesn't get the kill either. That is a complete team wipe. And Penta, that Queen of Pain, that positioning was really strong. The, honestly, the RP skier was pretty strong as well, but they just didn't have the 
follow up really afterwards. This was almost the ideal start to the fight. They immediately burst on the Queen of Pain. You know, they have the Ursa somewhat low, but even if they had gotten him, he has the Aegis, of course. Oh, Insignia finds the crush. He does have the blink now. So they do jump with the GP over. The Ursa pops his ultimate. It's gonna be really difficult to bring him down, and PA might just fall here without all oh, the missed chances! The missed chances. Well, they still get the kill regardless. So can they find more Insignia in yet another crush? Doesn't really want to be in this position though, but he might just draw the attention away from his heroes. But in the meantime, in the base, Magnus falls. AA next in line, and Insania might just be the last one to fall here as well. He... No, he's not going to. Oh well, he will be the last one because they do find the TA already. I wouldn't be surprised if they call GG. To be honest, this is a very troublesome. Penta already knocking on the front door. Twenty minutes into the game, haven't been able to get a kill in the last what? Five minutes, eight minutes or so, and they're gonna lose at least one set of racks. I guess they're all gonna be up to defend the second one, a second, second set because they're all so low XP or low level. But uh, without, well, I guess Magnus does have RP now, so maybe they can go for something here. Blink RP is still online. But so is the Aegis, and of course Penta want to fight and all of them immediately kills the AA. Buys back though, and the AA blast immediately comes out because they need this one to fight. But where's the where's the follow-up here, TA? Jumps forward. Oh, there's a blink crush onto two. There's a blink skiro. But the ice path interrupted as well with the macro pyre on top. Corkro can't fight the RP. Might even die without using the as the Aegis is put pop. Magnus is dead. No RP online. TA in a very compromising position. Mickey dies indeed. This is second lane. This is GG. Penta crush. Two hole in 20 minutes. What a performance from the whole team, of course, but I think it's worth highlighting nine, of course. Um, on, no, honestly, it's not worth highlighting anybody because they're all playing really well. Um, nine did, of course, stand out, but at the same time, it was the Nyx Assassin who even set up his lane in the first place. Uh, we'll be back with game two in probably like five to ten minutes, so sit back and enjoy some tunes.